We begin in Israel, where Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has delayed until next month his plans to introduce controversial judicial reforms. In a televised address, he said he made the decision to allow time to reach a compromise uh, with the opponents of the changes. Now, the move follows massive civil disruption and pressure which shut down much of the country and threatened to paralyse the economy. Here he is speaking in the last couple of hours. Out of a sense of national responsibility, out of a will to prevent a rupture among our people, I have decided to pause the second and third readings of the bill in this session of the Knesset in order to give time and reach that wide consensus. Let's go to our correspondent Tanya Kramer in Jerusalem. Uh, welcome, Tanya. Is this likely to be enough to satisfy protesters? Well, that's certainly uh, the big uh, question tonight. I mean, I spoke to some of the opponents uh, that have, who have been protesting here in the past uh, three months, and they said, you know, they're very sceptical, very cautious. They want to know what this uh, dialogue uh, that uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu offered will actually uh, look like. Now, today we've seen, you know, this unprecedented uh, general strike, uh, big protest again, uh, also by the right wing that are uh, in support uh, of this uh, judicial overhaul. So we understand the unions have called off uh, the general strike for now, but we heard from the protest leaders, the opponents of this controversial judicial overhaul, that they say this is a mere postponement and uh, um, that they will continue to protest. We might see, you know, that it might calm down a bit because we understand that it will be picked up after the Knesset comes back, after the recess, after the Jewish holidays, but they have vowed to continue the protests against the judicial overhaul. And so talk us through then the, the reaction uh, to this uh, delay uh, from uh, members of the Israeli parliament. Well, I think we have to understand that I you know we were waiting all day for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, to come out and, you know, announce his decision, what he wants to do. And that was possible because he had to, because he had to get his uh, coalition partners on board. Even before he spoke, uh, we understand uh, by a statement by the far right Otsma Yehudit uh, party uh, with its leader, uh, Itamar Ben-Gvir, who's the Minister for National Security, that they had agreed on uh, this, uh, you know, a postponement moment, but uh, they want to continue and want to go ahead with this judicial overhaul. Now, after the announcement, we are, the reactions are still coming in and we're hearing, you know, cautious reactions by the uh, opposition, uh, uh, mainly by opposition leader Yair Lapid. All of them have spoken by now. He welcomed this, but he also said, you know, uh, he hopes that this is a genuine offer. We also heard from uh, Israeli President uh, Isaac uh, uh, Herzog. Uh, he had actually worked on a uh, a compromise which was rejected then by the coalition government. He said again that he actually welcomed the delay. It's the right thing to do, he said. And he also offered, you know, his residence again for the parties to come uh, together. OK, thank you for that. Uh, Tanya Kramer in Jerusalem. Well, let's get more on this from uh, Guy Lurie. He's a research fellow at the Israel Democracy Institute. So welcome to DW, Mr Lurie. Um, this sounds like Mr right. Netanyahu has quite a job on his hands. By the sound of it, he has to find compromise not just with uh, opponents of this legislation, but also uh, a compromise that will satisfy uh, his own coalition. Uh, indeed, and, and if some of the members of the, his coalition are very adamant and uh, enthusiastic in going forward with the legislation. And also he needs to uh, find a compromise with a very diffuse, dispersed kind of uh, protest movement who does not follow the directions of the opposition parties. And so he has a very uh, difficult challenge indeed. And, and how much has the public outcry uh, played uh, into Mr Netanyahu's uh, decision? Well, I think it played a major role, and uh, it seems like uh, the spontaneous outcry uh, that began last night after uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu sacked his uh, defense uh, minister was a huge, had a huge impact. It was a spontaneous electrifying uh, enlistment, really, of the uh, public sphere, uh, people going out to the, on the streets. Uh, institutions that were out of the play, uh, labor unions, uh, municipalities, 
the universities all uh, declared a general strike and that played a huge role in uh, really forcing the hand of, uh, of uh, President, Prime Minister Netanyahu to, to uh, stop the legislative uh, proceedings. Right, so who do you think then miscalculated? Um, was, was this, uh, was this a, a Netanyahu problem? Was this a, a problem foisted on him by this, the, the, the right wing of this coalition? Uh, Where has it gone wrong? Well, there have definitely been uh, miscalculations by, uh, by the coalition, by the Minister of Justice, by Prime Minister Netanyahu. They did not, I think, expect that this kind of uh, massive protest movement that they saw on the streets. But really, there's a, a, the, the issue is more uh, material than that. I think the coalition uh, parties uh, have a very different uh, view of what the Constitution of Israel should look like, and they want a very different... Uh, kind of Israel, a less democratic Israel, and the public would simply not agree to that. So uh, as, uh, you could, he could have dab uh, done a more elegant uh, process, tried to achieve more uh, uh, a less uh, uh, hurrisome kind of process. But at the end of the day, uh, the clash between the visions of, of Israel, of the coalition, and the streets and the opposition were were just too great. Right, and and. The, the crowds on the streets are, are, are one thing. The, the cry from the, the opposition, um, another. We have the opposition leader and, and former prime minister, Yair Lapid, uh, warning that if these changes uh, are, are made, uh, then um, they could, uh, then a future government could, if it wanted, uh, cancel future elections. Is that a real danger? I think the issue is not really cancelling the the structural issue of elections, but uh, hollowing out elections. Uh, there might be a, a, a future government uh, that would curtail the right uh, to uh, run to office by my minorities. And there are some uh, proposals that will have that effect, even they, if they uh, indirectly. And they could hollow out the free elections and make it really impossible for a change of regime. I think uh, those are the real fears uh, uh, of, uh, of the opposition. And it's part of a greater uh, fear that uh, taking the power out of the court and uh, uh, really curtailing judicial independence will uh, make it difficult to protect the basic right. rights of the inhabitants of Israel, all basic rights, not only the right to uh, vote and the right to get elected, but other basic rights, such as the right to equality, freedom of speech. And these are the really uh, grave uh, risks that the uh, opposition fear. Thank you so much for that, uh, Guy Lurie uh, from the Israel Democracy Institute. Thank you for having me.